We've come a long way. 10 episodes to take a look at a whole bunch of different logic components. Today, it's about time to actually gather all our thoughts in one place and wrap it up nice and good. You're watching episode 10 of Logic Components. Hello and welcome back to, well, basically the last episode of Logic Components. So the whole concept for this episode is this. What I'm going to do is, well, I still have a few pieces of information that might be good for you, which I want to share, but couldn't fit anywhere else. So well, into this episode, they go. After we're done with that, I will very quickly summarize the entire series. And well, we'll call it a date. That's it for the series. Without further ado, let us jump into the first part. And well, what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you a simple little trick to actually simplify your truth tables. This applies in particular to latches and flip-flops. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually show you this process once for an RS null latch. And well, you can actually go ahead and extend the idea to the rest of the components yourself. So here's the truth table for an RS null latch. Notice that, well, there is actually a small amount of redundant information throughout the entire truth table. Take for example, the first two rows. We don't actually need to know the state of Q, we just need to know that the state of Q doesn't change. So we can actually express these two lines like this, in one line. Essentially, we ignore the current state of Q. That's what the X means. We just say that Q plus is equals to Q. That's it. We can actually ignore the current value of Q because we don't need to know its actual value. The same applies for both having set on and having reset on. We don't care about the existing value, we just set it to either 1 or 0 respectively. Same goes for the error condition really, whatever the internal state is, if you actually set both inputs to 1, well you will get an error. What this means is we've actually shrunk an 8 row truth table down to a 4 row truth table. And this same technique can actually be applied to the rest of the truth tables as well. Take a look at this, these are all the truth tables we've seen so far throughout this course, actually simplified using this method. Normally between two related rows, you'll be able to find something that is similar or related that you can actually substitute with a don't care condition, and as a result, actually collapse the two rows into one row. So yeah, it's a pretty neat trick to actually save you some time in drawing out the full truth table. This does not mean that the original truth table is invalid, it's just two different ways of expressing the same information. There is also one additional thing I need to clarify. Throughout the series, I have been saying RS knowledge and RS nanlatch. Please note that the alternate names SR knowledge and SR nanlatch are also valid. I haven't found any sources that show one is preferred over the other. The one I used is consistent with what I've heard the most. If you prefer, you could always say SR instead, since after all, that's the order in which the truth table entries are written. Now, another thing I wanted to cover with you is more of just, you know, a fun kind of conclusion-y type of thing. You see, all I wanted to do was to actually show off some of the things I've done so far using Logisim, more importantly, using the logic components that we've seen throughout this entire course. This is the most fun one I have, a fully functional combination lock. You can use the arrow keys to select any digit, and then use the up and down keys to increment or decrement their value. Status indicators light up when needed. With the wrong code entered, trying to open the lock yields an error. With the right code entered, the lock will open. In this state, you can set a new code. Watch as I reset the numbers, key in a new code, and then save it. To unlock it in the future, I have to enter the new code. Now, all this processing is in fact done with the logic components available in Logisim, most of which we covered in this series. At some places, I used components like arithmetic units, which perform math operations, comparators, which compare the size of two numbers, and counters, which count up with each clock tick. Apart from these components, you should be familiar with everything else, from encoders to multiplexers, and of course, the gates themselves. This one is pretty fine as well, one of the input components available in Logisim is this little joystick. 
Basically, it outputs two numbers representing the X and Y values of how you've moved the joystick. And well, by using a bunch of decoders as well as the LED matrix feature, also available in Logisim, you can actually make a little cursor move around based on your joystick input. I'm mostly showing you this to sort of just show to you that logic components doesn't have to be a boring and dry kind of topic. You can do some pretty interesting things with them. But yeah, that's pretty much all the additional things we wanted to cover. So let's actually move on and take a look at our summary. In this course, we started by examining what logic components are and why we need them. Then we jumped into the content proper by taking a look at NOT gates, AND gates, and OR gates and also taking the opportunity to take a look at truth tables. Then we actually moved on to look at some of the gates that acted like combinations of what we've already seen, that is the NAND gate, the NOR gate, the XOR gate, as well as the XNOR gate. We also noted the rather unique behavior of the XOR gate and how it compares up against the OR gate. Then we moved on to look at combining logic gates. I noted that individual logic gates can only do so much but by combining them, you get more advanced kind of behavior. We looked at three different examples that actually showcase this. First, we explore a room locking kind of application and how we can actually control an alarm, motion sensor, as well as a door lock. We explored using logic gates to actually string up these components so that they worked in the way we wanted them to. Then we actually moved on to a slightly more complex example, which involves adding two bits together. We noted that, well, essentially the output looks like something that is familiar. And as a result, we chose the gates that actually fit the build. Finally, we looked at an even more abstract application. Now, this one actually involves using one type of gate to create all the other types of gates. And this is called the concept of universal logic. In particular, NAND gates and NOR gates are the two types of gates that can be used for this purpose. After this episode, we moved on to take a look at physical IC chips. Unfortunately, I wasn't actually able to show you the real thing, but well, hopefully I described it well enough so that, you know, you understand how it works. After that, we went on to look at encoders and decoders, which are essentially, well, something to turn an array of bits into a number or a number back into an array of bits. Then we looked at the multiplexer and a demultiplexer, which is basically switches to choose either between one of many inputs or one of many outputs. Then we moved on to components that could actually store a little bit of information. We started by taking a look at latches, which essentially update immediately. We looked at an RS NOR latch as well as an RS NAND latch. After that, we took a look at flip flops, which are very similar to your latches, except now they take a clock input. We explored the whole concept of a clock and tried to understand why we needed it. Then we took a look at the T flip-flop, the D flip-flop, as well as the JK flip-flop. And that basically wraps up our entire journey of actually exploring the various logic components. So throughout this entire series, we've taken a look at quite a number of concepts and quite a number of components. Now, this is definitely not you know, a very complete picture, what I've tried to do is to actually cover as much ground as I can, but without going into extreme amounts of detail. What this means is chances are if you go to school for a course, you will learn quite a lot more. However, if you're going to a course, say next semester, and you're watching this series now, well, this is going to help you a lot in actually just understanding general concepts when entering your actual school term. What I'm trying to say is I'm keeping this information broad but not deep, and I hope you understand my rationale for doing so. I also want to take this opportunity to encourage you to actually learn more and try to find out more about these, especially if you're interested. So yeah, this basically wraps it up for this episode and the entire series. I hope you learned something and more importantly, I hope you enjoyed the process of learning something. It's been very fun doing this entire series. And once again, at this point, I just want to highly encourage you that if you have any comments, queries or suggestions, please do leave a comment in the comment section below. Don't be shy to reach out to me. I don't have many viewers, so I generally do respond to every single comment. But yeah, I've really run out of things to say now, so I'll go ahead and wrap this up. Thank you very much for watching this series, and until next time, you're watching 0612TV. Hello, thanks so much for watching. 
I hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, remember that I appreciate every like, favorite, and comment you give me. If you'd like to see more from me in the future, don't forget to subscribe to this channel. And for more updates outside of YouTube, don't forget to follow me on Twitter at 0612TV. Once again, thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you guys next time.